Growing up, I had the luxury of spending and seeing both sides of the life, the hood and the countryside. Not many people really get to experience this because it's so controversial. But when I sat down and complained to my mum, she'd always say, Hayden, you're going to appreciate this as you get older. And it was going back to these different places that made me realise, like, yo, the hood ain't somewhere I want to be forever, man. I just need to know how the heck I'm going to get out of here. Which shows where I spent majority of my summer holidays, and it? Like, we didn't have no Xbox, no Wi-Fi, just open space. But yeah, I still had some of the best memories here. I'm saying, I remember being in that field, it was all haystacks, massive haystacks. You're jumping on them, yeah, you're like, bro, I can't do this in ends. <laughs> <laughs> jumping fences in ends and brick walls. Pig roast, bro, imagine, I come to a pig roast on, sa on a Saturday with my nan. You go to a pig roast, I'm talking about hood barbecues, bro. I swear. No pig roast. The whole thing on a stack, whatever it goes through, I don't even know what it is. It's spinning rough. Like a donna kebab. Like you see you see the comparisons. <laughs> I'm a professional, you know. That skimming rock refreshing. But <laughs> <laughs> even climbing trees from half the use these days are not climbing trees fam. They're talking bare skid -da, da talk like it's not that like bro. Back in the day I used to climb this tree, do you know the amount of times that I fell out of that tree fam? Just having space like this to just do whatever you want like. I'm going back to my house in Smovy. The garden's not even that big like. And I'm coming here and I'm like, yeah, this is what I want. Like this is what I want. Not back there, that's not reality fam. This is reality, trust me. But it wasn't easy having such a controversial childhood because it meant that I started to question things. But at the same time, I knew that my nan and granddad understood where I come from. It's all changed, isn't it? It's so different now, isn't it? The sky's the limit, really, isn't it, for young people yeah. nowadays? Especially with the internet. Going for them, internet yeah, and mindset, internet. major things. Mm -hmm. The internet, people would like, forget how powerful it is. Yeah. And I felt like my nan and granddad on my mum's side showed me and my brother a lot more attention due to the fact that we lost our grandparents on our dad's side, so they tried to play both roles. And the death of my nan and granddad on my dad's side was more than just a loss to the family, and it? it was the only time I ever seen my dad cry. Like when you come to places like this, and you see so many different gravestones with people that once existed in it and you're like I wonder like what them people had in mind like what kind of plans they have and I'm not trying to end up in here with me not achieving one thing at all we never know when our time's going to come in we might end up in a graveyard so it's it's like important that we execute everything because you never know when your time's up man Throughout my school life, I wasn't the best behaved. I wasn't this little angel that my mum wanted me to be. And I put this down to boredom and disinterest. If I was being taught something that I didn't want to know anything about, I'd often start to misbehave, cause disruption, and influence the class and certain individuals to do the same. It wasn't something I was ever interested in, like what they was teaching me in school. It wasn't relevant to what I wanted to know. It was just what they wanted me to know, and it's just like, Nah, man. That's not me. I was always interested in athletics, so my mum would push on that. And still to this day, I think it's her way of trying to take me away from being around certain things. Call me out. I was in my lane, I was focused. Plenty of times I come running around that bend, thinking I was a little Olympian before I even started, and then. Work life started to get in the way, I had to start making a living because of other things and kind of made this slap behind and eventually I just stopped training. Even though I spent the majority of my summer in Wishore, I was still from the block and spent the same amount of time here. 
and Slavic. And being able to see what people were living like in Wishore, and it, like no house ain't really worth less than 250 bags. So I could go back to the hood and say to the man them like, yo, I'm seeing these man living different, bruv. We need to get the fuck out of here, man, trust me. And along the journey so far, I've met some real people and created some sick memories. Every time after coming back from my nan, come and play football here. Just like, was, we thought this was our little, you know, new camp or something. It was all nuts, man. The amount of times we kicked the ball in the main road, had to go and run in and get it, almost lose our lives over just playing football. It's little things like that, man. I didn't have everything materialistic in it, but I had a father figure around that most men don't have. And I had a mum that actually showed interest in what I wanted to do. And I had a younger brother that was looking up to me. So it was my kind of role to stay on track and show him shit that my dad wouldn't be able to show him. My dad always used to say, don't get reliant on me. Because the day my eyes close, you'll fall. And this is just a snippet of my journey so far. Like my controversial childhood often left me confused on it. But as long as you've got a vision and you stick to it, you'll be successful with whatever you do. And I haven't got six figures as of yet, or a successful business, but the journey will show you that I will.